Hey everybody, in this movie, um, we are going to start talking about jQuery and uh, using JavaScript frameworks. Now, what is a framework and what is it going to do for you? Well, basically, uh, we talked in, uh, in the last couple you know, tutorials about how to do basic JavaScript. And what's interesting is, you know, there's a lot of power within JavaScript, but there's also a lot of work involved. You're going to end up doing a lot of the same things every time. Uh, and then also you have cross-browser and cross-platform compatibility. So, you know, you write a script that work, seems to work in Safari on the Mac, and then all of a sudden it doesn't work in Internet Explorer over on Windows. And so, you know, there's a lot of work involved in that. And the purpose of, of designing a library like, you know, what's been done with jQuery is to, one, save you a lot of time from having to rewrite the same scripts all the time. And it also saves you a lot of time because the cross-browser compliance is kind of built into it. So it's a lot easier to do cross-testing. You still need to do some, but it's going to cut your, uh, your, your debugging time way down, which is a huge benefit to this. Now, the way it works is uh, this, we're on jQuery's website right now. It's jQuery.com. I'm actually going to show you a different way to do this in a minute, but you basically download the library. You link it into the header of your document, and then you run scripts to talk to that library to do various things. And the syntax is very easy to learn. It's a very easy concept. And uh, anyway, if you've never done any object-oriented programming or anything other than the JavaScript tutorials before, I'm going to go kind of slow in here because it is hard. And I do encourage you to work along in all these examples so you can kind of get your head around what can be done and, and how to do it and things like that. Uh, but anyway, this is, this is basically jQuery. Now, what does it do? Um, the, you know, if you can Google jQuery demos and find stuff, it's one thing I wish they had a little bit more demos on the website about how to use it because jQuery is one of the more common used frameworks. There are some others, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to pull over to Twitter.com, which is you know well-known website and gets a lot of high traffic. And not that this is the greatest design in the world, but I want to show you all the stuff that's going on in their homepage, and Twitter does use jQuery. And so first of all, there's some basic effects. So like when I roll over the search bar, you know, you get kind of a, a CSS3 type animation. You can do things like this in jQuery, and they will work on on multiple browsers, whereas CSS3 isn't really ready for stuff like that yet. Uh, you see this little news ticker that when I roll over it, it stops, and I get some pretty fancy little uh, bubble windows. And uh, there's some really great stuff going on there, and this is done with jQuery. A lot of these things you used to have to be, used, used to have to do in Flash. And, uh, you know, Flash, because the whole mobile dilemma here uh, is becoming less and less popular, and it becomes more more efficient and important to use something like jQuery. There's also, see this top tweets ticker? This is kind of a live update thing, and you'll see, um, oh, it'll, now that I'm talking about it, I didn't want to do it, but yeah, there it goes. Uh, you'll see the live update. Um, a new tweet comes in. Uh, there's a little bit of a highlight as it fades in, and uh, it's got a very nice effect with that. Um, there's also some really cool jQuery stuff that's going on. Uh, if I go to, let's say I have an account and I want to sign in, I'm going to click this tab here, and it opens up the form right inside this web page. So this is a really uh, important concept to understand uh, as far as using something like jQuery is you're going to hear people throw around the word Ajax a lot. Uh, A-J-A-X. And um, we're going to get into Ajax later. JavaScript and Ajax are two different things. Ajax is not a coding language uh, contrary to popular belief. Ajax is a concept and it's a way of using JavaScript to make things happen what they call asynchronously. And so for instance what I'm able to do if I sign in and use this form uh, simply by clicking this button, I don't have to leave the page. Okay, So you're able to all of a sudden start bringing stuff into your document without ever having to leave the page. It's a similar concept to these new tweets that come in, similar concept to the trending topics that go on this ticker up here, uh, that we're bringing in information on the fly dynamically inside the web page. So I can go ahead and log in from here, and it'll probably go to a second page after that. But there are a lot of websites that use Ajax for logins because it makes it really easy. You avoid having to leave the page to go to a separate login form. And it'll go ahead and log in and it doesn't disrupt the experience of the website. So anyway, some really interesting stuff. We'll get into all these as we go, but you can see that JavaScript being kind of this universal front-end scripting language for building websites becomes very dynamic, very versatile, and very important to have as far as enhancing that user experience on your on your web page. Um, without it, you know, back in the old days, we're just stuck with doing basic pages all the time. And, uh, you know, even though JavaScript's been around a while. Um, so anyway, in the next couple of movies, we're going to get into this. I'm going to show you how to install jQuery. Before we go on real quick, let me just show you a couple other things. There's a couple other uh, frameworks that are available to use. Another one is called MooTools, and their website is MooTools.net. Uh, and they do have some really nice demos on their page. I've always liked MooTools because the graphics uh, seem to run a little bit smoother on MooTools, although it is changing with, with the newer versions of jQuery. It's definitely catching up. Uh, but MooTools is available. And there's another one that's uh, one of the older ones um, that actually uh, Apple uses, uh, Backpack, people like that. I 
Ikea. Um, well, here it is. Who uses it? You got a list right here. Uh, and this is called Scriptaculous. And Scriptaculous is based on um, a very early engine called Prototype. But it, anyway, it's it's a really good framework as well. Um, now, as far as like you know, don't be overwhelmed by the, the fact that I've just showed you three frameworks here. Here's jQuery. We got Mood Tools, and we got Scriptaculous. The syntax to talk to each one of these frameworks is very similar. It's just a different framework. That's all. Each one of them is a little better or a little worse at different things. I think jQuery is kind of the standard, and that's why this is the one I'm going to teach and we're going to talk about. But it's really easy if all of a sudden you needed to, to work with the Moot Tools library to be able to go into the documentation here. And the syntax is very similar to jQuery, and so you won't be lost. You'll be able to pick it right up. I would not recommend switching back and forth uh, frameworks uh, definitely on a page or even between a website. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, you kind of want to stick with one or the other. Uh, and, you know, the, you shouldn't have a need where you have to jump to a different one, but uh, you might be working with a client who's using MooTools. You're used to jQuery. It'll be easy to pick it up. So anyway, in the next movie, we're going to talk about how to install this and how to start talking to the jQuery framework.